I would say on the list of cool and interesting things, nuclear reactors go pretty high on that list. I mean, from an engineering standpoint, they were incredibly impressive. There's loads of difficult engineering going on in there, just tons of bits and pieces that I personally don't fully understand. And also, of course, on a scary standpoint, they're pretty impressive too. I mean, I know it rarely happens, but when a nuclear reactor explodes, well, you certainly know about it. I mean, it causes a huge explosion and also covers the entire surrounding area in radiation, which stays there for thousands upon thousands of years. I mean, that's impressive and that makes it very cool. Now, unfortunately, in Minecraft right now, we do not have nuclear energy and we don't have nuclear reactors, but I thought it'd be a fun redstone project to work on. So let's begin. So the first thing that I've done is created this 15 by 15 by 10 block deep bunker that drops down into the ground. Now I decided to use iron blocks for this one just because I feel like they look reinforced and industrial. And that's the sort of thing that we want to be going for here because of course we're building a nuclear reactor, okay? You don't have like pretty wood and leaves and things like that in a nuclear reactor. Nope, you have iron, you have like redstone hard looking blocks and that's what we're going to be going for here. So the next thing I'm going to do is create the control rod system and I'm going to start that off down at the bottom. So I'm going to go three blocks in on either side. So that's going to be around about there. And I'm going to place a sticky piston every block just like this. And then I'm going to do the same thing going across right here. So just like that. So we're going to create a four by four area of sticky pistons just all facing upwards in this sort of grid formation. And then on top of those sticky pistons, we are going to place yet more sticky pistons. And then on top of those sticky pistons, we're going to place in the slime blocks and also these black stained glass box just like this. Now these are all going to be the control rods which essentially cool down the nuclear reactor. They stop it from overheating and exploding. So these are pretty important. All of these are now looking lovely. So we're going to chuck in all of the redstone across the bottom, just powering all of our bottom sticky pistons because if you haven't quite guessed yet, we're creating double piston extenders at the bottom here. So all of this redstone needs to power all of those. Then on top, we're going to have our removable objects. I'm going to be using obsidian because once again, these need to look like solid industrial blocks and something about obsidian just looks really rock solid. So I'm going to place in all of these. And then on top of all of those, we're going to need our redstone in once again. So that's just going to make its way round, connecting up all of these. And that's of course going to do our double extender. So this is going to power the second piston. But then to do the final block retraction, we actually need to place some blocks down at the bottom here which are going to power our pistons when they need to retract the final block. And the only way that we can do that is create this sort of waffle shape that we're doing right here. So as you can see, I'm just placing redstone in between all of the blocks going down like this, and that will do the second block retraction. To power all this stuff, I'm just going to place a couple blocks at the end like this with redstone going up like that. And then I'm going to have a repeater and a repeater set to four ticks with a block right here and a repeater set to two ticks. And that's basically going to do the double extension and also the first block retraction. Then for the second block retraction, I'm going to need a falling edge on a stable circuit. And the way that I'm going to do that is by placing blocks in a bit like this with a repeater running out into our sticky piston facing upwards with a block on top to create a monostable circuit. And then we're going to have our repeater that's going to be running out into a block up like this. We're going to have another immovable object right there and some redstone. And to keep things symmetrical, we're going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So we need to place a redstone torch and then our repeater, our monostable circuit, and our other repeater running out into the block with the immovable object and the redstone dust on top. Now, one very important thing to notice is that this repeater right here has to be set to three ticks because otherwise it will fire out all the blocks. But now if we run an input into this thing, you can see we get our double piston extension. That's looking lovely and also our double piston retraction, which looks awesome when they're all in sync just like that. And that is the bottom layer of our control rods all fully functioning. Now it is time to place in the fuel rods. These are the actual uranium, which is going to cause our nuclear reactor to work. So put on your hazmat suits, make sure that you're all safe and sound before you start touching this stuff, because otherwise, you know, it can do some truly terrible things to you. But we're going to place three blocks in, going upwards like that. Those are all our uranium blocks and they are going to make their way across just like this in this sort of formation and we're going to create a grid of them in between all of our control rods. So where this redstone crosses essentially, where we have this sort of cross going on, that's where uranium is going to be going. That's where it's going to be popping in and that means that when we extend our control rods, they will essentially pop up in this area in between our fuel rods, which are the uranium or the emerald blocks 
and that means they should end up looking pretty cool. In fact, I'll quickly demonstrate to you how it looks. So we do this, and then look, they all extend between, and it looks nice, or at least I think it looks nice. So what you have to do is you have to fill in that full grid, take it right the way out to this area right here, and it should end up looking pretty cool. So obviously we've got the bottom control rods and we also have the nuclear fuel rods which is pretty good going so far. I mean, I would say that the development of this has gone considerably faster than the development of a real nuclear reactor, so I suppose that's a positive. But now we're going to start work on the top control rods and to do that I'm going to place three glowstone up like this and then a glowstone across there and we're going to place a line of glowstone going right the way above all of our control rods. So there is the bottom control rod and this one lines up with it perfectly and this one lines up with it as well. And we're going to do a bunch of lines going right the way across just like this. So a line of them there and then another line of them right there and another line of them above the final set of control rods. Then on top of all of this glowstone, we're going to place in a bunch of redstone and that just goes in like this. And if you're wondering why I'm using glowstone, it's because it's a transparent block that you can also place redstone on top of, which means that we don't get any bud powering of the pistons, which is pretty essential because otherwise all of them would stay extended and your control rods wouldn't be working properly. But anyway, we now need to place in sticky pistons in this sort of formation right here, directly above where all of your bottom control rods are. And those should go in just like this. And then on the faces of all of your sticky pistons, we're going to be placing in the black stained glass. So black stained glass on all of their faces. Now powering this one is actually gonna be dead easy. I'm just going to place in some glowstone on the ends of all of these with our redstone once again. And then I'm going to place solid blocks in all of these just because I think it looks pretty cool. And we're going to run that redstone down a little bit just like this with redstone on top just like that. We're going to take out our lever that we placed down earlier, sticky piston facing downwards with a redstone block on its face, which means that that block will extend down at powering all of this circuitry. And that is the input line for the entire thing. So if we place in a lever right here and give it a flick, you can see that all of the control rods extend and this essentially shuts off our nuclear reactor. Okay, so this stops any nuclear reactions from occurring, which means that if things are overheating, for example, or we don't need that much power, we can actually turn it off and that will, that will shut everything off. And then when we want it to turn back on again, what we do is flick this lever right here, all of our control rods are retracted, and we get full nuclear reaction happening, which means yeah, I, I probably shouldn't be standing here. I mean, I, I'm clearly not in the correct safety gear. This is very, very bad for me. So the actual nuclear reactor itself is pretty much done. I mean, that's it. That is a simple mechanism that we have just created right there. The control rod system is all in place. So now what I'm doing is I'm working on the water area. Because for those of you who don't know, most nuclear reactors basically work by heating up and then that heats up water. The water then evaporates, turning into steam, which travels through a turbine, which spins that turbine, generating power. So now what we have to do is actually create the water holder. And I'm going to place in all of the redstone up at the top here. And one thing that I will just say is, as you guys know, water and redstone do not mix particularly well, okay? Make sure that your water does not fall through any gaps that you've left and just completely destroy your redstone build because well then you're in for a pretty bad time. But now I'm just going to cover this thing up, leaving a three by three hole in the center. Just one thing to mention for those of you who are building at home, the ends of your water holder should match up with the ends of the emerald blocks or your fuel rods, or the water should line up with the ends of your control rods. So hopefully that should give you a rough idea of the size of this thing. But anyway, now what we're going to do is we are going to take a pipe output from this thing and we're going to take it up by six blocks. So that is one block right there. So one block of the pipe, two, three, four, five, six. And that's going to run up to the top right there. And we need to do that on all four of the sides. Next up, in the center of our pipe, we're going to be placing in the various different fans and things that we're going to have in here. So we're going to have one fan there, then we're going to go up another block, and we're going to create another fan in a slightly different position, and then the final fan up at the top right here. Now, obviously, you are going to have to use some imagination on this one, because, well, they just look like crosses and X's and things. But in the grand scheme of things, I think that's probably a good start. Now, the next thing we're going to do is actually create a moving turbine system. And you guys have guessed it. We're going to be building the famous piston feed tape. I absolutely love these things. You guys have noticed down in the comment section that I love these things. But we need to place in one set of pistons that are facing in this direction. And they need to leave a gap of one block in each direction right there. And then you want to do the same thing on the other side. So another line of pistons traveling up like this. Just in that direction, once again, we've got a gap of one block right there and a gap one block right there. 
Then in this direction, we're going to have another line of pistons going up like this. There we go. And finally, in this direction right here, we need to place another line of pistons going up in this direction right here. Now, for those of you who haven't built a piston feed tape before, you may notice that all of these pistons are facing in different directions. And they're all facing across like this, and then across like that, and then across like this, and across like that. And that is because we're going to be pushing blocked in a cyclic formation. Now for some of the redstone wiring. So we want to place in two blocks against these pistons right here, which are above all the circuitry, and they go up a little bit like this. And then on top of all of those, we're going to place in redstone just like that. And then you want to place a block up like this and another two blocks running across on that side as well. So your two blocks going across like that, and then in the center of all of those, you can take out those blocks and place in a repeater set to two ticks with redstone dust right there. So repeater set to two ticks, redstone dust, repeater set to two ticks, and your redstone dust. And then you want to do the same thing on the other side, but just basically flip it around. So once again, two blocks, two blocks, and two blocks, redstone dust on top of all of those. And then down at the bottom here, it's a block up like that, a redstone dust, and a repeater set to two ticks. And just do the same thing once again, all the way out to the top. So your blocks and your repeaters, two ticks, redstone, redstone, and our repeaters set to two ticks. So that is pretty much all of the timing circuitry done. Now we need to create a redstone clock, some monostable circuits, and then the system to transmit the signals up through all of those. To connect up all the redstone, we're going to place in a block down at the bottom here, and then glowstone basically wiggling its way right the way up to the top, just like that. So diagonals all the way across with redstone going up just like this, and then do the same thing on the other side. So it's a block down at the bottom right there, with redstone like that, and then glowstone wiggling its way all the way up to the top, with redstone once again connecting up all of those. Then we're going to place a block down at the bottom here with redstone dust right there, and do the same thing on the other side, and then we just need to create a line of redstone which is going to connect up both of those. So I'm going to make a line of blocks just going across like this. We're going to place three blocks there, and then a bunch of blocks on the lower level going right the way across, and repeat the same thing on the other side. So a block up like this, and then we run the blocks out like that with a repeater and redstone running across off in this direction here. We're going to run it to around about that point, and then a repeater with once again redstone running across like that. Now we need to find the central block, so I would say that block right there is going to be our central section. So we're going to take out all of these right here, place some redstone right there, a sticky piston facing upwards with a block on its face, and do the same thing on the other side and then a repeater running into that redstone, and a repeater running into that redstone. And down at the bottom here, we're going to place a block with a redstone torch facing upwards, which should trigger our system. You heard all of the pistons firing. And then running into that, we're going to have ourselves a comparator with a hopper clock with one item on the inside. So if we just place all of this in just like this, you can see when we place in the item, we should see that all of our pistons will all start firing and they are perfectly in sync. That is the way we want things to work. But for now, I think we're going to place a lever down here and shut off the mechanism because otherwise that will drive me mad. Final details now. First things first, I need to place in a line of blocks going out from that redstone right there into the sides of our hoppers. Now what that means is when our control rods are extended, our hoppers will be shut off which means that our turbine will not be moving because of course the nuclear reactor is turned off. There are no nuclear reactions happening there, which means that there's no steam running through the turbines, which means that the turbine shouldn't be moving. But then when we flick the seat right here, obviously our control rods retract and that means that our turbine should be working. You can see all of the pistons firing. So now what we have to do is actually fill in our turbine with blocks and the way that I like to do it is by alternating glass and iron blocks. So what you have to do is find a set of pistons with just redstone running into them, not the repeaters. And we need to place a block, and then some glass, and then an iron block, and then some glass, then an iron block, and then some glass, you guys get the idea. But then when there is repeaters, you have to skip that block, and you need to continue on your pattern. So iron block, glass, iron block, glass, iron block, glass. It's fine because redstone is right there, so that needs to be up against that piston. And then once again, we make our way round, just like this. And then the glass, skipping a block because of course we've got the repeaters there. And just carry it on until you reach the end and it should work out absolutely perfectly. Then you need to repeat that process right the way to the very top. So this is what we've created. And we have now finished our nuclear power station, our nuclear reactor build. And I have to say, it looks absolutely fantastic. So currently all of our control rods are extended. Our nuclear reactor is shut off. 
But when we flick this lever right here, everything retracts. All of the control rods have been retracted, which means that we have nuclear reactions happening. And that means that the steam is running through the system and our turbine is turning, which is giving us power. We now have power from the power station, which is awesome. So this thing is now fully functional. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could then build like a big protective dome around this thing like they normally do in nuclear power stations, which would look epic. I personally think this is an awesome build for your worlds. It's just one of those fun projects to work on, and I hope you've enjoyed it. But unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that is all I've got time for today. If you did enjoy this video, please hit that like button. If you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.